All right. So this has been a long video in the making, only in a sense that uh, it's just taken me a while to put it out. So I shot this maybe four months ago, maybe a little longer ago than that. I don't really remember. And I don't remember the firmware that I had for the Nano. Um, I just know that when I was using it, it wasn't working well. I know they've released a firmware since then, so maybe it's improved. I don't really care. The first impressions really left me underwhelmed, uh, to say the least. I will just say I kept the small rig. The knob's not as tight on the small rig, so it's easier to move, but you don't feel the haptic feedback. So I don't know if that's better or worse. Is now that I can do this long focus pull with the A B marks, you don't get a third mark, but the nice thing is I'm still very smooth. I'm still hitting my A B marks. So I guess it really depends on how good of a focus puller you are. I feel like I'm not great, but I've been nailing this pretty much every time because of that. So we're gonna try something a little different. My girlfriend is going to focus as a newbie and we're just going to see that if she can nail focus on these, then maybe that's the one I should get because now it's starting to become uh, much harder of a decision. I focus on this part versus UHD, right? And then I also focus on this tree. And the point is you want to follow me. Focusing from when I walk down, it's just following the focus on me all the way through, right? Because you want to be focused on the eyes all the way through to when I pass. You see what I'm saying? I think too has to do with practice. Like once you get used to one of them, you know how it works. I like that vibration thing. I like that it's just tighter and it feels nicer. You like those tight as smooth there. But ultimately you think they're very similar. Very similar, yes. I'm just not getting used to how it works. Okay. I don't have Bluetooth on, don't have wireless on. Never had any of those on in the first place anyways. And uh still glitchy. Glitchy glitchy. All right, we're going to try the other one. This was the Tilta Nano 2. Um, some of it was better moving around, but ultimately, out, not outside, but in the back hallway, which is probably 22 feet and between, I guess, one, two, three walls, three walls and a door, maybe, maybe more than 22 feet, maybe more like 30 feet, 30 feet away, it glitches out. As far as I can tell, the Nano is just a glitchier unit. Okay, so now we're going back to the small rig and we're gonna test that in that same area where it looked like it was giving me issues to see if it was either the wireless uh, monitor or if it's the wireless unit of the A controller. <laughs> All right, time to review this footage. I got a little bit of glitching, but it seemed like a slightly less, um, except when I was pulling close focus, like clo or close to the closest object to me, these objects here. I can just say that for off the bat, it just, this one just doesn't seem to have a glitching problem or I don't know if I would say problem, but it, it just doesn't glitch as much, so. Uh, this is a test with the microphone pointed at the um, motors to see which one is louder. So I'm going, I'm on the uh, Magic Fizz small rig right now. So we're going to test that one. What I'm testing right now are fast racks. So chances of somebody actually pulling like this is not likely. And then I'm going to do some slow racks. Here we go. Now I'm going to do some slow works. Here 
here we are on the tilted nano and i'm going to do some rack fast first and then i'm going to go to some slower racks The torque and the sensitivity is all the way up. I just double check that because I feel like this is slightly slower than the um, slightly slower than the Magic Fizz, regardless of torque and sensitivity. I mean, it's all the way up, and when the torque is down even just a little bit, and the sensitivity for sure, when it's down even just a slightly, it lags, and it's just not good if you want real time feedback. And this one is slightly slower than the magic fist which the magic fist to me feels faster but all right i think we should try some slow movements now so i'm gonna do a couple of slow racks all right that's the slow racks of the tilta i do think the tilta is slightly quieter so I'm going to try and get this in the same shot, but this might be hard because of the depth of field. But basically, um, you know, having this and then, you know, and then the background here, um, you can see that there's a slight lag. Probably won't be able to tell, but in this one is connected to this guy right here. So if you can see that it sort of lags behind, it's not super duper noticeable but it's there so if that doesn't bother you then maybe you would prefer this one with the buggy features that may or may not come out but if you can see that slightly behind now i'll show you the uh small rig version Okay, so now we're going to test out the um, small rig here, as you can see. So this, I already calibrated it. There's videos on how to calibrate this. It's super duper simple. Um, and so now I'm just going to show you the speed of this. And so hopefully you can tell again, this one is just a slightly faster sort of um, sensitivity or response time. So me just turning it. You can see the jiggle there. Also might be one of the reasons for its loudness, um, but it's super duper responsive. Like if I'm trying to get something quick, you know, I spin this and then it it gets it pretty quickly. So I wouldn't be worried about responsive time for this. Again, it's not like airy fast or RT fast, but you know, this I think would get the job done better than nano two in terms of speed. So that is the small rig. So this thing is so ridiculously bad that some, for some reason, not touching the focus wheel, it'll switch the focus from 367 to 366. Let's see if I can, you see that? Did you see that for a second? It's like, it'll just move on its own. Look at that. I'm not even touching the focus wheel. Why is it doing that? It's, it's, this is unbelievable. Like, no, don't buy this. Buy this, buy this one. <laughs> unbelievable. Buy the, buy the dummy one or whatever. Like the one they would say is less feature rich, louder. It's just buy this one. This is the one you want. And what also makes this thing so bad, right, is that you cannot edit any of your lenses that you put into the camera. So if I want to go into this and um, and edit this Zeiss Otis that I have, it just won't let me do it. It just goes back to this part. And of course, it's not going to have the right information because every time I try to implement the right information into a lens, right, let's just say I, I add a lens right and it, do, it doesn't really matter what it is let's just confirm it and i try to add the data for focus right i already have the data pulled up in a pdf document and so i know that it's a 
19.68 inches, right? Which translates to one, hard to do this with two, one and 164. And it just shows that one foot and it's like, what the hell? And you can't put in infinity and it's just none of this, the feature stuff works out. So if you're looking for this for features, just say no, it, it's not going to work. I just got to show this one other thing real quick too. So if you're probably thinking, well, why can't you just do it in meters and then have it convert the feet? So why can't you just do 0.5 meters and have that go to feet? Well, let me show you why. So now we're in meters, right? Let's add, we got to touch this 100 million times, 0.5. Okay. So 0.5 meters, right? Now let's go to feet. And it says it's, I don't even know what that is. 50, it's five. And so no feet and fi five inches. So 50 inches, right? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? The, the nano just stopped working. I mean, at one point, and I didn't film this part, I was trying to get it to work with my, um, my Ronin. And even if the firmware wasn't out for it to be integrated with the Ronin, I was just trying to get the motors tie, tied in and then get it hooked up and it just completely stopped working. So I reset everything, turned it on, tried to recalibrate and it just wasn't working. And then I, I was stuck on that for maybe an hour or two until I just said, you know what? I just can't, I can't even mess with this unit anymore. So yes, it's cheap, but I wouldn't buy it. You shouldn't be spending even $10 on something that's not going to work because it's about it working on set. So if you're on set, you're trying to get something to work and everybody's staring at you and God forbid it's a paid gig. So you're spending $1,000 a day, $2,000 a day on just the production itself and you're the one being looked at and it's just something's not working right. Well, then you probably shouldn't be picking up that piece of equipment that may or may not work that day. I'm just buying this as a person who is a director and a person who shoots as like a backup unit for when an AC doesn't have something or if, you know, we need to just pull something out. And that's why the small rig for me works and it works well. Based on my findings, the Nano was just not a good usable unit.